Loft 100 Studios, The Big Biz Show, and our affiliates and our hosts are not registered investment advisors or broker dealers. Our show hosts make no commitment that the purchase of securities of companies profiled or otherwise mentioned in our programming are suitable or advisable for any person or that an investment in such securities will be profitable in general. Given the nature of the company's profile and the lack of an active trading market for the securities, investing is highly speculative and carries a certain high degree of risk. We profile selected publicly traded and privately held companies on our program. Most of these companies that we profile have provided compensation to Loft 100 Studios and its hosts for the profile coverage. From time to time, we sell shares of the companies profiled in the open market that we receive as compensation for coverage of client companies. But never sell stocks if we are speaking about interviewing or covering a public company who has paid compensation. Specific questions on compensation can be obtained by contacting producer at salientgroup.com. Listeners should verify all claims and do their own due diligence before investing in any securities mentioned on this program. Investing in securities is speculative and carries a high degree of risk. We encourage our investors to invest carefully and read the investor information available at the websites on the Securities and Exchange Commission at sec.gov and or the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, FINRA, at www.finra.org. I like it. I smell any. Yep. It's coming. Live from the Loft 100 Studios here in sunny San Diego, California. 110 million TV homes strong, 150 radio stations in 175 countries. And let's say hello to our new affiliate, Bloomberg. 15 million homes in Bloomberg Financiero in Mexico. Soon to be here in the U.S. Big Biz Show is on the air. We got executive producer Greg. Costa is here on Sully. Of course, the Day Trader Trio. Give me two. Let's see that. One of my favorite people in the whole world, not just CEO, is Ben Arrows. He is the chairman and co-founder of a company called Rival. Give me the stock symbol. RVYL. R-V-Y-L. Just like it says here on the guest sheet. Um, I want you, so you are one of the guys that understands that we are going to be in a new world very shortly. We are. Um, imagine if you were the guy that knew there was an iPhone coming a year before the iPhone came, right? So this is not just about digital, Bitcoin, Ethereum. It's about the blockchain. It's about the way we conduct business and how we uh, process payments um, going forward. Right. First of all, the number one issue with all these services, what do you, if I say send me a PayPal, what are you worried about? Your uh, fraud? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Right? So, yeah, get right. your PayPal password or and it's, and, like and, that. And I think that the crypto world sort of minimizes the fact that the real value here to Johnny Lunchbucket and Cindy CEO is the fact that there's a, they call an open ledger where everything's transparent. So I right. buy a potato, uh, uh, you give me a potato, I give you a dollar. It's there in effigy and witnessed by millions forever. There's a single point of truth. Now, now, so so is, that the, is that the driving force here? I mean, is that the key selling proposition for us to change? Or is it the fact that uh, we should care about a devalued dollar, but we don't because we don't understand it. But, uh, and we're the least dirty shirt in the hamper when it comes down to it because we're the global currency. So everything, all goods and services are priced in U.S. dollars no matter what country. Is it that or is it just a fraud thing or is it a combination of both? I mean, this is yes. a very, very astute question. Thank you. Uh, the, uh, when you look at the world of transactions, um, what people don't understand in general is that it is not about the size of the transactions. Huh? It is about the number of transactions. Um, the revolution will come from small transactions. So, so long that you fix the problem, person to person, small transactions, uh, Venmo style, uh, worldwide, that's where the revolution will come from. So Banks the, what, will adopt. The, Governments will adopt. Now? What's the problem now, in your opinion, with Venmo, PayPal, Verifone, the payment processing world? Because PayPal seems pretty secure to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it is pretty secure. Pretty you're secure. talking about uh, worldwide transactions, cross-border transactions, mm -hmm. uh, single source of truth for the ledger, mm -hmm. um, the fact that you are bound to one currency uh, that is controlled by a government that 
that even its own citizens, exactly, even its own citizens have problems with its monetary policy. Right. Will we see a world where there is no global currency because we have pure transaction ability? I think so. You know, um, when I worked for Microsoft, uh, Bill Gates always used to say that um, revolutions come from garages, not from big companies. Mm -hmm. Um, our biggest competitor would be some guy in a garage building a new type of software uh, that we will have to compete with. Um, I think you can extrapolate that uh, notion to the global uh, financial systems. Mm. Um, I don't think that the replacement for the dollar as a global transactional currency will come from yet another government. It's going it to come, be from, some it's, it's gonna come grass, from political will from digital exactly, currency, right? Exactly. Right. It will come from grassroots movements. It will come from uh, digital movement. It will come from a solution that will accommodate the small transactions, person to person, where they rely on the source. They know uh, the scarcity. They know um, that issuance of new currency is not under the control of a political whim. But right, or, under or, some or, commercial or, or guidance. perception, exactly. Because perception drives our value, right? Exactly. We don't have a gold-based or uh, or a value-based currency. Actually, almost no country does. I think the Seychelles Islands use actually seashells. But I mean, honestly, there is like we went to a fiat system under Nixon. My question for you is: Are we going to get to the point where I sell Greg a car, he sells me a car, and and or, or a piece of real estate, and there's no more brokers? But we don't need brokers anymore. Of course. Like that's that's the end game is cheaper transactions and more transparent transactions, but it takes out the middleman almost everywhere, correct? Exactly, the, the whole point is selling derivatives. Yeah. So in other words, the control of money is as important as the money itself. Right. You don't have to um, buy uh, Greg's boat with dollars. You could, say, you could buy it with his IOUs, right? With his he representation of control of he currency. Pre he prefers a suitcase full of money, I'm just telling you. That. <laughs> yeah. um, can I ask you But this? not one that you printed yourself. Exactly. Yeah, okay. yeah. Thank you, U.S. government. By the <laughs> way, every government does quantitative easing. We're just better at it. Um, <laughs> talk about Rival and what, where you guys fit in and why it's so important. Uh, so Rival started as a company that um, looks at the problem from the digital perspective. We never had a solution that was not digital. Uh, we always had... Uh, the approach to ledgering as a single source of truth. Mm -hmm. We had a um, stablecoin approach that is 100% backed up by cash. It, so has, it has a commodity that backs it up. What is stablecoin versus digital currency? Because there's a difference there, correct? There is a difference. What yeah. is the difference? So uh, stablecoin could be centralized or decentralized, uh, but it is a digital representation of physical Currency. So it's backed by value. Backed is backed by cash. Okay. That cash could be printed by a government as Greg. irresponsible as ours. <laughs> the Republic <laughs> of Sully, Greg, and Costa. Yeah. What uh, could go however, wrong? Uh, dig digital currency in general uh, is an extrapolation of that and could be not relying on fiat currency. Mm -hmm. um, and its scarcity could come up uh, from algorithms, from right. Uh, being backed up by commodity like gold or oil, mm -hmm. like we see around the world, like we right. see now from BRICS. Right. Um, so there is a fundamental difference. Right. Our particular approach is to look at the stable coin as something that is auditable in real time, backed up by physical cash mm -hmm. sitting in the bank and unleveraged in real time. Um, this is a very important principle. This is where we started and this is where we'll continue. Ben, how do you, how do you get past the people that say, I don't want the government to know what I'm doing with my money. I don't, the, I don't want them to know that I'm buying whatever I'm buying or I'm paying whatever service I'm paying. Or Below the screen now says three days later as the IRS <laughs> building. <gets> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Is that a tough hurdle? It's super tough hurdle. And, okay. and that's another very astute question. So. I mean, if you look at the, what the, the government, um, namely the Federal Reserve, the SEC, uh, Gary Gensler, yeah, yeah. when he looks at the problem, um, they all look at digital currency as the enemy. 
right? They say, we don't want you to, do, to have the ability to do transactions that, where we can look over your shoulder and well, see what you're doing. Because yeah. the Fed Reserve is a biggest um, scam in the history of this country. Because, right. How about this? Let's print money, go buy our own bonds, take the profit <laughs> to fund the government. And by the way, it's not run by Congress. Nope. It's called the Fed Reserve. It's supervised by Congress. And by the way, nobody knows who owns it. In fact, it's suspected that the very banks that borrow money at 0% or at this point 3% yeah. okay, are the equity holders <laughs> of this scam. What could go wrong? And by the way, if you go borrow, well, the, if you're the, the bank... The real you, scam is that there are not enough dollars to cover the obligations. Exactly right. This is, it's a naked short. It's exactly, exactly. what it's Exactly right. All right, let's continue the conversation next time you're on. But I, I have to tell you, um, every time you come talk to us, we learn something more and we're in a little worse of a mood. Because <laughs> yeah, thanks. We're, thanks. we're all scared. A thanks, bit. Ben. Uh, ben Ares, rival. Uh, you'll see more of him. And I think I think we need to do a whole show. Yes. Like an hour show. I agree. Starting from scratch. Big this show continues. See you in a minute.